views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning us in and turning us on. This is Cultural Brilliance Radio with my very special co-host today, Claudette Rowley. This is the DNA of organizational excellence. And you're going to find out today why that is. For those of you that listen to Claudette's show, that listen to what her message is about, here's what I want you all to know. Those of us that have worked in organizations, we know what it's like old school to have people come in and talk to us about culture, about organizational change, about the dirty word called re-engineering. And one of the things that she and I both recognized on the way to becoming who we are in the world today, there was a missing link. And if I might say, to use the metaphor, a a missing strand, Benny, of DNA. It was missing. And when you got a missing strand of DNA in anything that you're doing, that thing that you are hoping to turn out the way you think it was going to turn out just isn't going to happen. Today, we get to talk with Claudette about not only what she's discovering as the CEO of Cultural Brilliance, but more importantly, why it is time now Now, why is it time to change the way we work with organizations, talk about organizational change, and most importantly, talk about the people that make up a culture? Claudette, it's great to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is an exciting topic. Looking for a change. Listen first, act second. Oh, thanks, Pat. I'm excited about this. We're going to have a great conversation. Before we jump off to this, can you just tell folks that are listening how they can, first of all, they're going to hear things today that they're going to want to know more about. What is the best way for them to get a hold of you or find out more about you before we get right into this today? Absolutely. So my website is culturalbrilliance.com. And there you're going to find a lot of information about the work that I do, including what we're going to talk about on today's show. And then also, um, a few different ways to get in touch with me via email or phone. So culturalbrilliance.com. Awesome. Okay. Let's start with the, with the title of the show today, you know, looking for a change question mark, listen first, act second. OMG. I mean, this is something that we need to like pass out, you know, special postcards to everybody about, especially in the world we live in today. Can you talk a little bit about looking for a change, listen first, act second, and culture and its relationship to people? I would be thrilled to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have so much fun. Yeah. Thrill, thrilled to do it. Yeah. So one of the things that I notice in my work is that we sometimes talk about and people who work in the, in, in the field of culture, even organizational development practitioners and then leaders in organizations, employees in organizations, so people from all different perspectives, we'll talk about culture and people as though they're two separate entities. Yeah. And so what we, when we really think about it logically, we don't have a culture unless we have people because people through their interactions, their communications, what they learn, how they 
uh, make decisions together and work together and all of that, they're actually what form the culture over time. So we actually can't really separate people and culture because if we're trying to develop people within an organization, we're impacting the culture. If we're trying to change the culture, we are influencing how people are growing and developing. So it's really a symbiotic relationship. They're not two separate things. You know, do you think maybe, and let, let's just talk about this for a minute, because I know we're going to just really kick in at so many other levels, but do you think perhaps that we've studied organizations so much, um, Claudette, in the history of talking about things like this, that we've become way academic on one end? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some people in this field, you and I know about Edgar Schein and so forth and so on. But we've gotten so textbook-like that we forget the dynamic in organizations today. And so how can we get back to that place of recognizing uh, it's about the people and mm -hmm. hello, it's about the business? Yeah, it, and it's really that it's about both at the same time, really. Yeah. The people yeah. in the business are actually not separate, even though they're often spoken about in that way. And I know, I think we, you know, we started... I'm so grateful for all the incredible academic research on culture and organizations. Yeah. And as I know you are, and I think what's happened now is that it's been a little bit challenging sometimes to translate in that academic research, which tells us culture is important and it needs to be tended to, but how do we translate that into, which is what my model is trying to address. How do we translate that into everyday life in an organization to the, like you said, to the dynamic that's actually occurring in the organization every minute of every day. Um, and that, that's what, that, I feel like that's one of the next horizons is it, one of the fr next frontiers is to say, how do we actually get in there and in a practical way, start helping an organization work with its culture differently? Well, you know, you mentioned the model and I, I want to stop for a minute because I was talking, I, your ears must have been ringing yesterday because yeah. <laughs> I was so talking about you. Yeah. Exactly. Right, yeah. And I was talking about you and I was talking about, you know, what you've created because I, I went back because you and I are going to spend some time together after the show to really look at the next level of things. And I went back and looked at some of my notes and I was talking with someone, um, someone as a matter of fact, that's starting a brand new venture. And I said, you know, check out what Claudette has done because the missing strand of DNA, these were my words, and I'd love for you to comment on this. The missing strand of DNA was authenticity. And mm -hmm. I was talking to them and I said, can you imagine doing an organizational assessment just like the survey I got in the mail from my political party asking me what I thought and laughing about the questions they were asking me? We sometimes make that mistake. So how can we, as people that work with organizations, remind them we have to be deliberate and we have to remember to be authentic. Can you talk about how you've now plugged in that strand of DNA in the model? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, as you said, Pat, authenticity has often been overlooked. And when I'm talking about authenticity, I'm talking about understanding what's actually going on in a culture at any one time. So authenticity is, is neutral in the sense that it's not saying if something's authentic, that it's great. If something's authentic, it's not great. Uh, or it, it's negative in some way, it's saying, we're going we're gonna to understand authentically what's going on right now. So we actually have a baseline. We understand how this organization and this culture operate in this particular moment in time. And authenticity can take the form of understanding what are some of the, the hidden norms, hidden operating assumptions that are unconscious in a lot of organizations that people don't, they, real, they act a certain way, they behave a certain way in concert with each other, but they don't know, always know exactly why they're doing that. And often it's because of the underlying assumptions that operate um, in most organizations. So when we, yeah. we, start, we, we start to plug authenticity back in, we're really saying we're bringing what's unconscious into the conscious or into the consciousness of the organization. So the organization itself can start to make better choices. I know you use the term in every one culture and every one culture. And I want to ask you, in order for us to do that, there has to be some real focus in doing it. And I just want to be clear on one, th one thing that you and I talk about a lot. You know, we're not saying that we look at organizations and there's a level of authenticity and we promise everything. 
you know, we're not saying you come out of the gate and say, you know, just tell us, tell us what's on your mind, tell us what's on your heart, and we're going to make the change. That's not what we're saying. We have to also be authentic as leaders of an organization to say, this is why we need this information. We may or may not do it all, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us how we need to be deliberate in what we're doing to create that every one culture. So to give credit where credit is due, is due and every one culture is actually a concept. It's actually a book um, by Robert Keegan and Lisa Leahy. And so in this book, they are talking about the, what they call deliberately developmental organizations. And essentially, and I, I, this is one of my all-time favorite current books on culture, um, because they're essentially talking about that you cannot, a few, three, a few different really important concepts, but that you can't separate the bottom line from people development, that they're all one and the same. And that when we're, lo it's called an everyone culture because the idea behind these deliberately developmental organizations is that everyone within the culture is responsible for, I'm responsible for my development, helping you with your development, helping the organization with its development. And it's looking at the idea that, you know, how do we help adults in an organization continue to grow and evolve? Um, because not just because that's a nice thing to do, but because it actually helps the organization itself to be much more successful than it was before. Um, so it's a really different way of looking at how culture can operate uh, in, in a way that includes everybody. Includes and you everybody. know what I... I know yeah. what I, you know, we're going to take a short break. You know what I love about this? What the realization Jessica and I have had is that culture does transcend and moves into the people realm. We looked at this in your work as well. And we are, have sat down as a team here, probably going to need your help. And we looked at why aren't we looking at our listening audience in this way? Mm. Why aren't we taking Claudette's model and doing what the people in Belgium have done and that is overlaying it and truly as we launch this new network doing a sanity check that makes sure we're listening first and acting maybe second third fourth or fifth let's take a short break <laughs> when we come back Claudette's going to take us on a journey culture organization people are they really the same thing? And if so, how do we redefine leadership? Cultural Rally joining me here today. Yeah, this is Cultural Brilliance, the DNA of organizational excellence. We'll be right back. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Registration is now open for the 25th Annual Women of Wisdom Conference. Join the fabulous presenters from around the country on February 16th through the 20th. If you believe in raising the feminine spirit and transforming our world, then this conference is for you. Get your tickets now. One day and full weekend passes are available. For more information about presenters and tickets, visit womanofwisdom.org. That's womanofwisdom.org. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to effect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down. Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tuning us in and turning us on. And what I want to say is thank you for all of that. Claudette, before we jump ahead, because I know this is really exciting um, for us to share with people what you've created. Again, you are available to come into organizations, work with people, do half-day seminars, workshops, all of the above. You can work with people, executive coaches, entrepreneurs, one-on-one, please let folks know the best way to contact you. Thanks. I'd be happy to. Yes, I definitely do all of the above and, and probably more. <laughs> so the um, <laughs> best way to reach me is my website, which is culturalbrilliance.com. You can find my email address, phone number, uh, contact form right there on, on, on the contact page. So culturalbrilliance.com. Awesome. You know, um, cultural brilliance is something that you created – um, a, a while ago, and it has elements to it that are really solid. And folks, you all can go to the website, culturalbrilliance.com, but there are elements within the elements you have on, on, on the website that are coming to life. This is one of them. Culture, mm-hmm. organization, people. Are mm-hmm. they the same? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that they are. I think when we really, when we start to dive down and understand what culture really is, what organization really is, and what people really are, we don't, we don't have a culture without people. We don't have an organization without people. And culture and organization are actually pretty much the same thing when we think about it. It's a group of people that got together to form something and create something. And a culture forms with, you know, everything we know about culture, right? Certain sets of norms, ways of operating and behaving that evolve over time. And we know there's a culture there because when people leave, some people leave an organization and new people come in, the culture stays. So, and the culture might then change and be impacted if there's a lot of new people that come into it because those people will influence what happens. But it's really the initial people that created the culture. And the organization is formed by the people and influenced by the culture. The only difference might be is that the organization may have more, you know, it has has its structure, it has its designs, um, it has some more, you know, pragmatic structural pieces to it. However, some people would also argue there that that still is the culture. So I I view them all really as one and the same. Yeah. And, you know, can I talk uh, a minute? Can you and I just talk a minute at what happens when we don't? Before we jump into self-leadership, yeah, you know, what happens when we don't view them the same? I know you have seen many things, you know, on the way to being who you are today and working with organizations. What are some of the missteps that may happen if we mm-hmm. miss out on these? Like, for example, if we see culture and organization the same, but we don't see culture and people the same. Mm-hmm. I know what happens when we when we blend organization and people together. There's a lot of research that... Um, that have come out about the mistakes that get made from that, especially Mm -hmm. in understanding. What have you seen, especially around leadership? How how do we mess that up if we don't get this right? Yeah, it's such a great question. I mean, sometimes, you know, we hear, we say people in our organization, and when we understand what an organization actually is, that is, it's redundant. (laughs) The people in our organization, well, you don't have an organization actually without people. Right. Yeah. Um, so so that really is the same thing. And, you know, when when leaders tend to look at these really separately and they do 
often are doing this because it's it's what the way we talk about in common vernacular. So they're not it's not that they're obtuse or don't know what's going on. It's just the way culture, organization, and people are often referred to and talked about in this separate form fashion. But when we start to understand that they're really almost one in the same, leaders start to understand that they can't put their culture off to the side and say, I don't have time to deal with my culture right now. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, you don't have time to make money. You know, right. what, I mean, what? So for them to, for leaders, to, and some, there are a lot of leaders that do understand this, but for all leaders to come in and say, oh, you know, we, it can't not, not look at my culture, but because my culture is forming every day. So yeah. I, I actually have to understand it, pay attention to it. Um, however, that's going to work in a particular um, entity. And the same with, you know, understanding that or, organization and people are really, really synonymous. That we say our organization is moving forward in a particular way. What we mean is our people are moving forward in a particular way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and one of the things, too, that we're also looking at here is when we talk about the company, the company is represented and from the from from the very essence of it by some of the people at the top. But that's not the only measure of leadership, is it? Mm -mm. Not at all. I mean, it, actually thinking of leadership only at the top is usually a really dangerous thing to do because <laughs> yeah. because there's leaders leadership throughout the entire organization whether it's official leadership or not um, and what we actually really want from the people in our companies is for them to all all be leaders right to engage right. in some kind of self leadership right yeah right. and right. one of the things that I I've found myself saying lately and and in various conversations is when we think of, when we read stories, it could be in the newspaper or, you know, in a, a business magazine, something like that, about uh, a company that's like come back from the brink, right? Or they've been really successful. Uh, and we almost always hear some version of, you know, we went deep down in the organization. We asked this department that was charge of this production process and this department over here that was in charge of sales or whatever, right? And we actually asked them to solve these specific problems or give recommendations on how they thought we should move forward. And so almost always those success stories include going way down deep in the organization and talking to the people on the front lines and asking them what they think should happen. We, and the, the, the stories we hear about companies going bankrupt and other things, you know, negative things happening, almost always involve the people, the leader, executive leadership team making a decision and handing it down. Yeah without input. Yeah. And I may be oversimplifying a bit. However, those stories usually go along, have some sort of theme like that in them, which tells me that we have got to, we need to go down to people at all levels of the organization. So we actually understand what's happening yeah. and that we also, we really need to encourage this idea of self-leadership and teach people how to do it. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about self-leadership for a minute. And people, the biggest question is, wait a minute, how do I lead myself? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I follow what we're talking about today? Looking for a change, listen first. How do I lead myself? And that question has a lot of layers, doesn't it? How do mm -hmm. I lead myself in the middle of a chaotic organization? How do I lead myself in the middle of an organization where I don't think blah, 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 fill in the blank? You mm -hmm. know, how do we do that when the voice in my head just will not take a time out? <laughs> Great question, right? <laughs> that voice is not taking a time out. So, you know, I think, how do you lead yourself? Yeah, it, it is, there are many layers to that, but at a high level, it's looking at, you know, what's my level of self-awareness, right? In terms of how I lead, how I manage, no matter what my job is, how I interact in this organization, what's my level of self-awareness? You know, there are, th are there things that I'm putting up with here or tolerating that in my heart of hearts, I know that I probably shouldn't be putting up with or tolerating. You know, are there ways that I could put my ideas forth or um, offer to lead an initiative or things like that or that I know would help forward my career and I would, you know, I would enjoy doing or get something out of doing? You know, how do I manage my emotions and thoughts effectively? That's a huge part of self-leadership. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're not hijacking me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, today, there are so many emotions that go on. And, you know, we have to really move beyond the old model of leadership that says, leave your emotions at the door. Um, 
that really didn't work in developing authentic organizations. And, you know, what you're talking about today is really stepping forth as an individual, you know, in integrity within yourself, but also being willing to figure yourself out, right? Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it is it, being willing to figure yourself out. Um, I, I, I believe that not not all not all folks certainly, but m there's a high percentage of people who ignore some of the ignore some of their own their intuitive sense of things, mm -hmm. right? So the positive voice in their head that says, "Why are you still here at this organization? Right? Why are you taking this from so and so? What's stopping you from putting this idea forward? Right? How do you want to move forward in your career? And some of those thoughts that we may have that we don't those questions we we don't stop and answer. And we don't necessarily pay attention to, but I think a lot of us have them running, at least at the back of our minds. And part of self-leadership is stopping at some point and answering the question, you know, at least reflecting on the question. Right. Right. I want to ask you this, uh, you know, as we take a look uh, and we think about ourselves, it's one thing to look at ourselves, Claudette, in the middle of, you know, yeah, this is me. But there's a dynamic of how I might be in the privacy of my own room versus how I am interacting in an environment and interacting with other people. And they're not the same, are they? No, they're, they're not necessarily. Well, for some mm -hmm. people they are, right? Some people are right. at the point where they're, whether they're in their own room or they're out somewhere, you know, they're out in a conference room having a meeting, they're pretty much the same person. But a lot of people feel, um, it's actually that book I referenced earlier called In Everyone Culture. Um, yeah. They talk about that most of us have a second job. And the second job is managing how we're perceived at work. Yeah. And that, as we all know, takes a lot of time and energy. So that it, when you're in an organization where there's things are, things are a little more, there's a little more psychological safety. People mm -hmm. feel freer to say what they need to say, which doesn't mean they're not going to get feedback, which doesn't mean they're not going to be told that they might want to look at their behavior or what they're doing, but it's safe enough to have those kinds of exchanges, you know, mm -hmm. who someone is in their own room and who they are at work often becomes one and the same over time, which I think is the healthiest way to be actually. Yeah, I do too. And it is a journey. And sometimes we sit and we wonder why the heck are we not able to figure things out? If you're like me, then you have a number of different people you work with. Mm -hmm. And if you're like Claudette, she works with a lot of different people. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what do you need to do to lead? How do you listen to lead? Whether you're somebody that is in a corporate environment, whether you are a massage therapist, whether you are somebody that has a small business, it doesn't matter. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the most important aspects of what you can learn as you show up to live your life. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. I used to bite my tongue and hold my breath. Scared to rock the boat and make a mess. So I said quietly, agreed to laugh. You can now join Dr. Bree Gibbs and the Silver Gaia Academy for an all new inspirational and educational show the second and fourth Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. Join Bree and master teachers on a journey to Gaia. We are always evolving as individuals and the planet. The Silver Gaia Academy is here to help guide and teach you how to raise your spiritual vibration. Will you rise to the occasion? Get your monthly dose of self-awareness and mindfulness. Learn spiritual regeneration with visionary leader David Karshare in Becoming a Sun Radio, emotional and spiritual intelligence for a happy, fulfilling life. Explore the unknown regions of the emotional experience and set them free with David. Tune in once a month to Becoming a Sun Radio with David Karshare on the Dr. Pat Show and Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit davidkarshare.com today. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Be unstoppable. Who do executive women count on for up-to-date information on everything from stilettos to being heard in the boardroom? To achieve excellence, you must first take control of your life and develop a successful strategy with the Unstoppable Diva. Tune in to Up or Out with Connie Fife, Mondays 5 p.m. Eastern, as she cuts through the BS to guide you to become bold, connected, and unstoppable. For more information, visit uporout.com. I let you push me past the breaking point. I stood for nothing, so I fell for everything. You held me down, but I got up. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Claudette Riley joining me here today and looking for a change. Listen first, act second. For more information, why don't you go and look at culturalbrilliance.com. And also, if you've missed any of the shows we've done before, we have a radio page there that will give you the essence of what this message is around brilliance. And, you know, Claudette, uh, you know, is talking today. We're talking about, okay, we're looking for a change, right? We got to listen first, then act. Mm -hmm. Uh, That is one of the more difficult things to do. Uh, What is the, the, what is one of the most important things in that? I'm sure we all think, yeah, listen, listen, listen. I know, I know, but Mm -hmm. we don't know, do we? (laughs) Some people do, some people don't. (laughs) Right. Um, So we're talking about, we're not talking about your, you know, in, in a company, right? An organization, the everyday listening where you're listening, but you're on your phone. Or you're listening, but you are running through the back of your mind, you know, all the things you need to do. You're listening and hoping the person will hurry up and finish so you can say what you need to say. We're not talking about that kind of listening, and we all do it sometimes. We're talking about when it's important, particularly when you're listening to lead, You, it's a, it's, it's a different kind of listening. It's the kind of listening I call global listening, and other folks do as well, where you – are so focused on what the other person is saying that you no longer you're not thinking about what you're gonna how you're gonna respond, right? Or the grocery list running through the back of your mind. You're actually really focused on them. What are they saying? What's the meaning you're hearing? You know, what's their body language like, their facial expression, their tone of voice? So you are really listening as fully as possible. And what I one of the things that I find missing in organizations a ton, um, especially right now, is the ability to just to stop and really listen like that. And under, hear what the other person is saying to you and also really hear and listen for what's important to them. You know, Why are they communicating with you right now? What's really important? And what's it like for me to listen in a way where I, I take in what they're saying, not what I hope they wanted – hope I'd hope they were going to be saying or I wish them to say or you know what I wanted to hear. But I literally neutrally hear what they're telling me and internalize that as their message. Yeah. And, and, you know, part of this is that in the world we live in, we're all busy. We're all doing things faster than we've ever done before. Um, You know, I I had someone share a story with me the other day. They missed one word in a sentence, 
right? It was a very, very important word. And it's the difference between uh, an instruction that says, do this and don't do this. And when you miss a word and you don't stop and ask yourself, hey, you know, I need to check that out. We just keep marching forward. And I wanted to ask you, as as people that are leading, Mm -hmm. what do we need to do to listen better? You know, part of it is is learning some listening skills. So most people think they're reasonably good listeners until I work with them on it or I have a a one page assessment I'll often give out that just gives people it allows people to just assess themselves and look at where they fall. And often folks will report, wow, and these are leaders and managers. I I didn't realize that. (coughs) Excuse me. I didn't realize that I I really need to shore up some of my listening. You know, I don't do as well with that now that listening's been fully described as I thought I did. Mm. Part of it's, and a lot of times I'll give, you know, I'll, I'll give people homework, you know, focus on listening over the next week. And they'll come back and say, you know what? Wow. Like I, I really just stopped and listened when people were talking. You know, I didn't plan my next response. I didn't, you know, and one guy I remember said to me, he said, it, he said, people are so used to me jumping in and interrupting them that when I wasn't doing that they asked me what was wrong (laughs) because they were so used to him coming in and doing that so part of it's an intention to listen more effectively part of it's if you're you know if as folks are interested finding an assessment to take reading up on it um, asking for feedback how how well do you think that I listen you know how do you know if I'm listening well what would you want from me what would signal to you that I was really listening to what you had to say and I think if you to your point about the story about missing one word um, you know, we, once in a while, we all to get distracted or we, we, you know, our mind moves and spaces out a little bit for a second. There's nothing wrong. And I've done it saying, I'm so sorry. I actually lost track of this conversation for a minute. Can you share your last thought with me again? Yeah. It's just saying I'm human, you know, here it, I'm copying to it. Yeah. It, you know, and this is so easy to do because isn't this also part of what you're saying which is, you know, listen first, act second. And yes. so often we want to listen first, act second. You're also talking about the fact that acting second doesn't mean that you run off and do something. It could also mean to take a pause before mm-hmm. you act and say something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's also part of what we're talking about. Isn't it take a pause before you react, before you say something? It is take a pause before you react and say something. And it's also under starting to internalize the idea when people say, I don't have time to listen fully. We're too busy. We just need to get stuff done or some variation on that. That is so much more, in most cases, efficient to stop for two extra minutes, five extra minutes, and fully listen and have a, you know, an intentional, thorough conversation because then we have fewer miscommunications. People don't go off thinking one decision has been made when it was really different than decision decision was made, right? People hear fully what needs to happen. They can ask questions if they're not sure or they think they misheard you or you think they misheard, you know, there was a misunderstanding. Um, So actually listening fully is almost always more efficient. Then before, then you go off and take action, like you said, or you pause for a minute and decide what you wanna say, whatever it is. But before you go on to this next communication or action, You have actually listened and given yourself a second or two to internalize. Yeah. You know, when we are looking at, you know, the world that we live in and we're looking at the possibilities, let's talk about possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not talking about ego. We're not talking about political gain. We're not talking about power. You know, these are the things that we somehow have to reconcile within ourselves, don't we? Mm -hmm. We're looking at something very different. What is that? We, when we're really looking, or excuse me, when we're really listening and are listening to lead in an organization, we're starting to look at the notion of things like the idea, what's best for everyone here? Mm-hmm. And that comes from Otto Sharma, who, who wrote the book and many other books, um, but this particular book, Leading from an Emerging Future. Uh, you know, what's best for everyone? What is going to be the best solution to this problem? What information do I need to make a good decision? If it's a group, what information do we need to make a good decision? What are all, you know, what's, am I willing to listen to someone push back on my idea as a leader because I'm actually missing information and I didn't realize it. 
And so I'm willing to stop and say, yeah, I want to hear what you have to say because you may have a really important piece of information that I don't have, right? And so when a leader is more focused on ego, he or she's going to have a hard time doing that. When they're more interested in power dynamics and political gain, they don't really care that much about listening because that's not their goal. You know, we're going to be talking about what listen means. You've come up with um, a way of talking about this uh, using the word listen, L-I-S-T-E-N. The most important part of this in the work that you do, too, is or one of the one of the really important things is, you know, we listen to implement a change. You know, we listen to do that. Uh, We're going to take a short break. When we come back, you know, Claudette's going to walk us through what listen really means. How does she take that word into organizations to facilitate change for the good of all. Um, We're going to take a short break. And again, if you want to find out more uh, about Claudette, why don't you go to culturalbrilliance.com, find out about her work, what she's doing. Uh, Also, very, very important. If you want to have this dialogue in your organization, ask her to come in and talk about it. We're going to take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Do you want to relax more, feel happier, and be more confident? Do you want to have more success in your life? Dave Dodge has some easy, effective methods to help you release your anxiety, worry, fear, depression, and even physical pain. Tune in to Stress Buster Radio with Dave Dodge every second Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. For more information on how Dave can help you release your stress, visit StressBusterRadio.com. Skype and phone sessions are available. TheAngelLady.net 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 1-800-323-1790 Sue Storm TheAngelLady.net Are you sick of feeling overworked with no motivation? Take a break from the daily grind. Life coach Nicole Eisler is here to provide a healing journey of optimism. Passionate and caring, Nicole is no ordinary soul. Her dedication to helping everyone has no limit. Witness the power of positivity. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific for Positivity Party Radio with Nicole Eisler on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit BigDreamAwakening.com. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to affect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down. Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com.
Hey everyone, welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tuning us in and turning us on. Um, thank you so much for all that you all do and listening is what you do and we actually hear you. Um, Claudette Raleigh joining me here today. Cultural brilliance is what we're talking about uh, in many, many ways. Um, looking for a change, are you? Well, listen first, act second. Um, Claudette, for you, uh, you have a way of talking with people about listen, what the word really means. And you've actually created um, a way to talk about it. I would love for you to share what L-I-S-T-E-N means in order to implement change. Absolutely. Um, so we have our, yes, our listen acronym. Um, and when I'm... It's one of the ways when I'm working with folks on improving listening skills or even just talking about the value of it, we start to dig into each one of these and have them talk about it, what it means for them and even for their organization. So the L is let go. Um, and by that, I mean really letting go of preconceived expectations about what's going to happen in a particular conversation or what you're going to hear. Right. So, you know, let, let your mind go, let go of expectations, let go of assumptions, let go of anything that's in your way of listening fully. And then the I is inquire. How often we forget to ask good questions in the spirit of inquiry after we've listened. Mm. And that could be because you want to forward the conversation. It could be because you didn't understand and so you need, you need clarification, right? Maybe you're trying to understand someone better. All these types of questions, these lines of inquiry are really worth your time. Absolutely. Then S is for silence, and that is because depending on your organization and your personal style, some people can't stand silence, and so they'll continue to talk. Yeah. Or if they've asked a question and someone doesn't say anything for a few seconds, they'll start talking again in various forms of that. Uh, and silence can be okay. Sometimes people need a few minutes to think about things. They're processing. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you'll, you know, if it's a team or a group of people you're, you're um, working with, as a leader or manager, you may ask a question in their silence, and that could mean, it could mean a number of things. But I always say I don't know how to interpret silence. So after it's gone on for a while, I'm going to check yeah. in and see what, what does the silence mean? Does it mean you're just all thinking? You don't like what I said? There's something else going on everyone's afraid to say? You know, what's the silence about? Yeah. So silence is actually a great communicator. We just don't know how to interpret it till we ask. Hmm. And then we have the T, which is teach, um, and that's teaching others about ourselves, certainly. And that can be your listening style, your communication style. You know, if you're someone who, need, you know, needs a few seconds to process. You know, when we, we're talking, I'm going to be, if you ask me a question, I'm probably going to be silent for five to ten <laughs> seconds, maybe longer, because I need some time to think about what you said, right? Someone might say that. And there's also teaching about context. Sometimes we are in conversations and sure almost all of us can relate to this in some right. form or fashion right in a conversation and we don't know the full context of what we're talking about and so if you're really listening you can often tell that there's either you know what the context is or there's context missing if you're listening closely and you can ask a question about it so can you tell me more about the context around you know this conversation it sounds like you're trying to find something out but i don't understand why right i don't understand mm -hmm. the environment around it so with teaching we can teach about ourselves and the context that might be important Mm. Then E is for, is for empathy, and that, as we know, when we're listening and we're in an, any, almost any kind of conversation, if you're really in a state of being able to listen, almost always you can have empathy for, you might have empathy for the person, you might have an empathy or compassion for the fact that they just have a different worldview than you do, which doesn't mean that they're wrong or you're wrong. They no. just simply look at it very differently. Um, so it helps us, it helps I find the empathy, compassion, keep people whole. So if I'm talking yeah. to someone that is, has different views than I do, I can still view that person as a whole person. They, they, they're thinking differently. They view things differently. But it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them or their views. Yeah. And can I ask you a question about this before yeah. we move on? Because I think empathy is one of the most confusing um, um, ideas we have in the world. Empathy doesn't mean, A, that you're agreeing with someone. Not it at all. does, you know, and it doesn't mean that you condone an action, right? 
Absolutely. Um, it, it doesn't mean that at all. What it means um, in the way you're talking about it is we have to stop more for a moment and perhaps even put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. Is that part of it too? Yeah, it's absolutely part of it. Yeah, as you said, we're not condoning, we're not agreeing. It, empathy saying, I can put myself in this other person's shoes for a minute and see what it's like to be them. Um, mm -hmm. I can also be more adaptive in my approach because again, I'm going to understand that people may be coming forward with a very different perspective, a very different mm -hmm. viewpoint, just a, it could be an overall worldview that they're perceiving things how they perceive them. And can I, if I can have empathy for that and try to understand it, our conversation is going to go forward more effectively. Doesn't mean I agree with them in any way. Mm -hmm. Empathy and agreement are not the same. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks. that is really such an important part. I mean, I know that you cannot say this enough in working with organizations. I mean, you and I both can, you know, you cannot say that enough. But I've used the term on the on the show and I've said outright, you know, there are some things that I really feel for people, you know, in that situation. And it must be hard for them, you know, to be uh, stuck in that job, that position. It doesn't mean that I am saying that, wow, yeah, there's nothing they can do about it or so forth and so on. But if we're not at least putting ourselves in other people's, you know, spots, what are we missing out on? Aren't we kind of missing out on half of the, half of the conversation? I think that we are. I think that we are because it's 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 sitting back for a minute, standing back for a minute and remembering this person that you're conversing with is honestly, in almost all cases, is mm -hmm. to honestly expressing what's true for them in, the, in a particular moment through their experiences, their lenses, their perspective, their perceptions, right? There's so many things we look through. And if we can have, if we can start we try to understand and have some empathy and stand in their shoes for a minute, we're going to learn a lot about where they're coming from. And that's what listening is actually all about. Yeah. We're going to learn a lot about that. I know. Okay. Yeah. So if we can get to that place and we can truly empathize and we can truly hold the space for that, you know, what comes next then is the doorway to possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Next which steps. Is N. Yeah. Which is N. Next steps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, yeah, is the doorway to possibilities. Uh, it could it could be yeah, opening the possibilities to something greater than existed before. It could be something fairly pragmatic, like okay, we we had a conversation, we've listened to each other, we now understand where we had a miscommunication. So what are our next steps? You know, is there anything we need to do right now? But essentially, it is how do we move forward from here? Whether that's pragmatic or um, by understanding each other more effectively. Yeah, what are our possibilities now? You know, it's an interesting, um, it, it, you know, there are many, many ways that I've learned, you know, back in some of the earlier seminars I attended, especially what that, you know, the lost art of sensitivity training, if I might say. Mm -hmm. um, but silence, I think, is one of the toughest of these, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For some people, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and I think you have to be trained. So when I, I teach a um, uh a graduate level class at Northeastern University here in Boston. And I, when I start, start off with a new class, I always tell them that I'm very happy to extend silence uh, when I ask them a question. And some people kind of laugh, like, because they've experienced <laughs> that somewhere. You know, I'm happy to extend silence. I'm letting you know. I will ask a question and stand here and wait, right, for someone to come up with an answer. And I think we often, we forget to extend silence. We're not comfortable with it. It, it can be a learned skill, definitely, to sit mm -hmm. with silence. And in some ways, I view it as a form of respect. I'm going to give you enough respect so that you have a chance to process, percolate, ponder, whatever it is, before you say something. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to yeah. assume you don't know what you're doing or thinking because you haven't responded within a half a second. Yeah. And, you know, I think that there's so much to be learned from silence. There's so much, you know, it gives us an opportunity, at least for me, sometimes, you know, silence on radio is not a good thing. All the lights go off, but silence in a room and just to observe people and look into their eyes 
you know, without the words, it's extremely powerful. Thank you for today, Claudette. Thank you for all the work that you do. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you this question. You know, what would you like to leave us with here when we're talking about looking for a change, listening mm -hmm. first? What what can you share with us here that people can think about and even do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, happy to. Really thinking about the fact that all all effective change is good changes, whether that's something individual and personal making or an organizational mm -hmm. change, start with listening. And when you skip that step of listening well, which could be having 50 conversations with people, could be focus groups, could take a lot of different forms. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you skip that step, it is highly unlikely that your change is not going to go well, that the best solutions are going to be uncovered, the implementation is not going to go well, and people in this are probably going to feel unheard and resentful at some point. Mm. So really, really invest in listening, listening first, before you even think about making a decision around a change. Yeah, I love this. And, and if folks don't know how to do this, they can give you a call. You can work with organizations. You work with people all over the world. And I know that listening right now is one of the top key issues for customer service across the United States. It is so hot. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you directly? Uh, cultural, go to culturalbrilliance.com. Um, send me an email, give me a phone call. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love to work with organizations and leaders on this topic of, of listening and how it can help transform aspects of their organization and their leadership. It's incredibly powerful. Wow, thank you for a great show. And those of you out there, if you missed any part of this, um, you will be able to hear this entire show later on today. And of course, go to transformationtalkradio.com or go to culturalbrilliance.com and you can download this. You might want to go to iTunes or Spreaker and subscribe. Thank you all very much. We'll see you next time. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.